Hello guys, this is uh, Dario from Cosmic Camper Vans and in today's video I'm going to go through the top five must-haves for every camper van. Now these are the five things that I've identified after working with many many customers over the last six seven years of building Cosmic Camper Vans and there's just the re re repetition of items that a lot of people come across and they, they just find so much value from having these on their van. So in my opinion and from the opinion of experience working with lots of people and building camper vans, these are the top five must-haves that you might want to consider when you're building your camper van to go for. So we're going to get straight into it and start with number one. That is the pop-top roof. Now. The reason the pop top roof is so important to have is because it just completely changes the dynamic of the actual camper van in terms of usable space. And that's why you see so many different vans with the pop top roofs fitted. So the, the main reason is it increases the internal roof height when elevated. So if you're able to get to the campsite, pop up the roof and you're able to move around when you're cooking, when you're getting changed, or if you're just basically milling around in the van, getting in and out, etc. You're not going to be consistently being bent over with your head down because it is quite a tight space inside the vans without a pop top. So it's going to make your experience actually using the, the, the van when you're out and about much more enjoyable. The second reason it increases your two berth sleeping capacity. So you can actually add the roof bed. If you look on this bit here, this is the roof bed on an SCA roof. It's got a nice mattress and there's a huge sleeping space up here. So if you've got kids or um, uh, a significant other, you don't want to spend too much time within in the sleeping area downstairs because it's quite tight sometimes, then you can you can bit and bob between the two over the next over the few days that you're out and about in the van. So it means you can take an extra two people away with you when you are using the van, which can be massive. Um, when it comes to taking kids away, for example. The third reason is it increases the value of the vehicle and it's also easier to resell later on. So obviously you're investing in the vehicle, you're spending two, three, four, five thousand pounds sometimes when you're having a pop top roof fitted. And when people come to buy a van or if they're looking to buy a van, most people want to buy a van that's already done. They don't want to have to then go and get a pop top roof fitted later on because it can take time. It does cost money to do. So if someone's looking for a van, usually one of the requirements is, is that it has a pop top already fitted. So if you're looking to resell the van later down the line, maybe a year or two after you've used it, it will make it more desirable. And usually you're going to get all the money, all the money back that you spent on actually having the roof fitted in the first place. And also it's super quick and easy to use when you compare it to an awning. So if you had an awning on the side here, which is like a, you know, like a tent, as you would call it, attached to the side of the vehicle and no pop top, every time that you get to a campsite, you're going to have to erect that awning. You're also going to have to take the awning with you in the camper van, which are usually quite large, big bags. You know, if you're carrying a big awning around, it can take up a lot of space inside the camper van. When the space is already so... Uh, tight and compact in there with all your other belongings then when you compare that to having a pop top which you can just literally get to the campsite unstrap the straps push it up and then you've got your two berth sleeping capacity more head height it's done in 10 seconds it's much more practical when you compare that to an awning because an awning can t take the best part of half an hour to an hour to uh, erect and also then you've got to take it all down and pack it all away and it just becomes a bit of a faff to be honest so having the pop top completely uh, defeats that problem and allows you to have the same advantages all in one. Moving on to the second one. So the next one is the diesel heater. So the diesel heater for me is almost essential in every single camper van. And the reason is, is I don't like to be cold and we, li we do live in the UK. And from the month from probably October until probably I'd say April, when you're in the van, even if you've got a van that's insulated, it can get cold at night, it can get freezing cold at night, and it doesn't matter how many duvets or sleeping bags you take, it, it gets cold in there. So having the diesel heater is going to allow you to have all year round camping. You could be able to go out in any temperatures and use the van comfortably without worrying about having to take loads of duvets with you. It's super easy and reliable to use. The ones that we fit are the Planar heaters. They, are, they come with a three year warranty. They're super reliable. We don't have hardly any issues with them. And it just means that it's there. You've got that peace of mind that when you want to go away, no matter what the weather is, if it's freezing cold, you can just jump in the van and go. You can also preheat the van. So for example, if you use your van as a daily driver and it's the winter months, you can actually set the timer on the heater to turn on at, say, 7 o'clock every single morning for half an hour before you plan to get into the van to drive to work. And it will defrost the van for you and keep it and make sure it's nice and warm for you when you get into the van without having to get in there and then wait for the main engine to start and get warm for you. So that's a good advantage to it as well. 
It doesn't require an external fuel tank, so this direct taps directly into the main fuel tank of your vehicle. So that means you don't need to fuel it individually, you just need to make sure you're fueling your own diesel tank and it will work. So it's really simple to use really. And when you actually compare the cost of what it costs to have installed, which is around 995, so around a thousand pounds for a planar heater fully installed external with a three year warranty, the difference that it brings to your experience when camping is massive. It is so worth the money without a doubt. And it's just going to make everything much more pleasurable. You're not going to be freezing cold. And you can go back to a van that's nice and warm. And you're not got to wait for it to heat up. Or use turn the engine on to heat the van up for a bit before you go to sleep. It just makes a huge difference and just makes it more enjoyable. And then you also get more usable storage space. Because you won't need to carry as many blankets or duvets with you. So if you know you've got a heater in the van, you can take your normal uh, sleeping bag. And that's it. Because you, the van will be warm all night long without you having to worry about taking lots of duvets. Which will then take up the space inside the van. Okay, moving on. We have then got the solar panel. So the solar panel is essential for me, really, if you've got a camper van and you're looking to go off grid more than I'd say two days because the solar panel is going to give you simple and hassle-free leisure battery charging. Now a lot of people don't realize how just how quickly a leisure battery can be drained down if you've got a fridge running, lights running, uh, any other appliance if you're plugging your phones into charge. The standard AGM leisure batteries that most converters put into a camper van due to the size are going to run down within two days. So if you've not got anything charging it other than a split charger, if you're parked up, then you're going to have nothing, unless you're plugged in, of course, nothing's going to be charging the van. So having that solar panel gives you that kind of hassle-free, simple charging so you don't have to think about it. It also works all year round, uh, as long as there's sunlight, obviously. I shouldn't have to say that, but I will put that in there. If there's sunlight, the van's going to be charged, the solar panel's going to be charging the leisure battery up until it's full. So it just means that when you turn up at your destination, you don't, have to, don't have to necessarily worry about there being a hookup because if you're staying there for two, three days, you can use your electrics as much as you want within reason, of course, depending on the wattage of your solar panel and you're going to have a, a good level of battery, a good level charge in your battery. So I would recommend a minimum 150 watt solar panel. Um, we do go higher at Cosmic. We can go from, we, we fit a 165, a 165 with a hidden entry cable and then a 250 as well. But anything over 150 is probably the, the benchmark that you want to go for in my opinion. And also this is a little thing as well. You can keep your fridge running, which I just mentioned before, but you can go off grid longer without having to, the stress of trying to find a site with hookups. A lot of people come to us and say they, they struggle finding sites with hookups sometimes. So that means they can't plug their van in to charge their leisure battery. Now the solar panel helps to mitigate that uh, effect. So that's another thing that you need to think about. Now you do have two different types of solar panels. So you've got the flexi panel that most converters put onto the pop top roofs. And this is because they, they can bond directly to the pop top roof, which is good and it's nice and sleek it doesn't kind of stand out and then you've also got the fixed solar panels now i know this fixed solar panels are more efficient overall uh, but the only thing is you can see here that they're screwed in you can get glands and other mounting brackets that fit to the pop top so we can do you either way um, but in terms of looks and style the, the semi-flexible panels are preferable but in terms of efficiency over time then the fixed panels are preferable okay next one is the security system so we all know that camper van theft is constantly on the rise, as is every vehicle theft in the UK at the moment, because there isn't really many um, many laws go. I'm not going to say there's many laws, but not much is being done by the UK police in terms of um, thefts now. Um, so com camper vans are being stolen day in day out nowadays because the parts that they're built with are valuable people can strip them down they can take your diesel heater off for example there's loads of different things that they can do to they can strip off and sell for parts and then obviously the, the value of the vehicle so in my opinion to spend spend 500 pounds to save yourself the worry of having your pride and joy stolen is, is a good deal i would pay that every day and that every single camper van that i've had i've had some form of extra security system fitted because it just means that you're not worrying all the time where you park it you're not worrying when someone's going to come around in the night and steal it it does also increase uh, reduce your insurance insurance premium so if you bring your insurance premium down by 100 pound or whatever it is it's always a benefit and you still get the benefit of the security system and it's also extremely easy to have installed and it can be done at your home so you don't have to go to somewhere to have it installed you can have it uh, have an install or come out to your drive for example fit it whilst you're at the house now there's a couple of different options um 
There is the security system called the Scorpion, the S5 Plus or S7. There's a couple of different options, but the Scorpion Immobilizer Tracker System is what I would have on mine and have had on my personal vans. I had the S5 Plus. So the S5 Plus, how does that work? You get a fob that can, is, is on your key ring, and you also get a tracker as well with 24-7 monitor security with a subscription service. So that basically works where if the fob is not in vicinity of the key when it starts the van or if someone tries to start the van without the fob it won't be able to start the van won't be able to be taken away or, or driven away so that's the first part so that's the immobilizer side of the security system and then you've also got the tracker system so it's got 24 7 monitor security by the the security center at, at scorpion they've got great recovery times on vehicles that have been stolen and it means that it alerts the police straight away and also them as well so if someone does manage to get the key for example and steal the fob you've still got the, the, the tracker system that will recognize and you'll be able to track where the vehicle is you can also go on the app the app is fantastic it means you can track all the data of how someone has driven the vehicle so if you lent it to a friend or a family member for example you can see how they're driving it where they've driven it how fast they've driven it all the different details is, is, is really informative the app is really really good and then you've also got this other system called the auto watch ghost 2 now I've had both and my preference personally is the is the scorpion and I'll tell you why the ghost system how that works is when it gets installed you choose a four or five six digit entry pin and that is chosen by clicking certain buttons on the multifunction steering wheel or on the dash etc loads of different ways you can do it and to enable this to start the vehicle you have to enter this code wait a couple of seconds for the dash to flash and then you can start the vehicle now the only thing that i found with this is after time it can get really annoying to do this every single time you start your vehicle if you for example you go to a petrol station you get out you put the petrol in you come you go and pay and you come back and you've got to press it every time over time that can become a bit monotonous a bit uh, tedious to be honest with you it also becomes a problem if you want to lend the vehicle to uh, if you, someone needs to move the vehicle in a car park or someone needs to move the vehicle at your, your friend's drive for example if you parked in the way You've got to tell them the code and they've got to figure it out and they, they're like oh what well, I, I, some people just don't figure out obviously you know if they've never used it before it can be quite confusing so that becomes a problem because then they lock the car up and the car won't start for a good minute or two so that can be a problem that's what i found with my van i wouldn't have the ghost again because the, realistically the situate the, the immobilizer that this provides is exactly the same as this the only difference is that they only need to take the tag in this and they need to know the code on this so that's the difference between the two. Ultimate security, really, it's probably better to have the Ghost, but for practicality and almost exactly the same as the Scorpion. And I, So I personally always go for the Scorpion on my cars or vans. I've also had the Scorpion on my motorbike and uh, the vehicles at work as well. Okay, this I think is the last one. This is the Swivel Base. So the Swivel Base greatly increases the usability of your camper van, and, and i explain why. If your seats are consistently or constantly turned around to the driving position, that means you've got no sitting space in the kind of social area of the camper van, in the social area of the camper van. And this can make a big difference because if you've only got two seating spaces here and you've got a couple of friends around or something like that, or you want to have a drink inside the van, it's raining, it reduces that usability of the van. It also adds one or two more extra social dining seats when swivel. So, for example, this one, this is the MS Craft uh, swivel base, which is what we would recommend for the VW or the Ford as well. And the reason I recommend this one over the Kiravans one is because this one actually slides back, allows you to rotate the, the seat and then keep it in place. When compared to the Kiravans one, this one is just fixed in place. You have to swivel it in the place and it just stays there. So you can't move the seat forward into the camper van to sit near a table, for example, because that's usually where the tables are situated. So from there, it's too far away. And also, it can be a real pain in the arse trying to swivel this Kiravan's base in, in situ because it kind of conflicts and it starts scratching the plastics here and hitting the armrest on the driver's seat this one allows you to pull it out swivel it and put it back if you want to or keep it in place there where it's closer to the table so in terms of practicality and usability the ms craft is is far ahead of the the Kiravans in my opinion the final point it also allows you to get access to the pop top for people that struggle to get up into the roof such as children so with this turned around 
if it's in a place like this, you a, a child can go for directly from, say, the bed area or the kitchen area up here and then climb themselves up into the pop top. With it swiveled around, sometimes these can be a bit too close to the entry point or the hatch where the pop top is. So it can be a bit tight. It can be a bit too, um, yeah, too tight for some people to get in through there. So having that sw swiveled around or pulled forward, it means that some people can find it easier to get into the pop top, especially with some certain pop tops, for example, where instead of being on the hatch at this end of the roof, they're a little bit further in. This swivel base gives you that option. So that's a really good, um, good point to make. So there's just a short video. I wanted to go through the top five things and I hope I've answered um, some of your queries. Now, if you do have any other questions about camp fans, please let us know. Uh, I'm always here and available to answer any questions about your your experiences with camper vans. If you've got things that you're thinking about before buying a camper van, please let us know. And if you are interested, guys, we are actually starting to launch our camper van academy. Now, what is the camper van academy? So the camper van academy is a online e-learning platform that allows people like yourself to learn about camper vans, you know, what, how to spot for the, the right things when buying one, what things you should look out for. And there's also a module that will show you how to build your own camper van conversion company. Now, if you are interested, please drop a message in the comments below and I will send you some information on this. Um, we haven't launched quite yet as a date of recording this video, but it will be very soon. So if you do have any questions or you want me to make any of the videos about that as well, please let us know and I'll drop your message as soon as I see your comment. So thank you very much for watching this video if you got to this point and I hope